and seen. Here we go. Day three, getting you ready for tomorrow's checkpoint quiz. Today is just putting together everything we've seen. Okay, so again, good news. You're not gonna really see anything you haven't seen when it comes to solving inequalities. So it's important you remember what we've seen the last two days. Again, how many problems? Four and no more. Four and no more, we're done, okay? So, number one, write it down. Make sure you have a piece of paper, pencil, calculator if you need it. Nothing else is needed. Here we go. Number one, negative three plus x over seven is less than or equal to negative two. Negative three plus x over seven is less than or equal to negative two. So this is just like any other solving that you've done with an equation. You wanna get the variable all along. Variable all along. What's over there with the x, right? I always used to ask my classes, what's being done? X is being divided by seven, and then it's being combined with a negative three. So we gotta start moving everything over, everything over. So think about what your first step would be. What would it be? Correct, add three. By the way, that was only correct if you said add three. If you said anything else, you're wrong. All right, here we go. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And you have to show your work. I gotta see work to give you points on the quiz tomorrow. This gets rid of my negative three. We're left with just x over seven, less than or equal to one. All right, now this is yesterday. Right now we're back to yesterday. X is being divided by seven. How do you undo divide by seven? Say something. Okay, good. You multiply by seven. I'm left with X, I'm left with seven. Did we take action with the negative? No, no, no. So our inequality stays the same. Graphing I'm gonna do pretty quick. From what I saw the last two days, you guys got graphing. So I'm just gonna do the graphs. First, feel free to pause me and try it yourself. And I'm gonna draw it here and do the big reveal. You ready? You ready? Bam. Seven in the middle with a closed circle because it is equal to, we are less than, so we're left than. We're going to the smaller numbers. All right, one down, three more to go. Purple, because I'm secure. Here we go. Simplify each side before you start doing anything, right? Simplify each side. This side is not simplified, okay? Number one, everything was already simplified. We're gonna start moving things. What do we do first in number two? This is gonna get awkward if you don't say something. Thank you. You distribute the four. You get a 12 minus 8n less than 36, right? That's the distributive property. I've seen lots of you do that. Whenever there is a number smooshed right outside grouping symbols or parentheses, you got to multiply that in. All right, now we're back to where we started with like we had in number one. I gotta start moving anything that is on the side of the variable to the other side. And what's being done? N is being multiplied by negative eight, and then that's being combined with the 12. How do we undo a positive 12? How do we move that to the other side? Well, the inverse of a positive is a, that's right, negative. Don't lose, this is one of the biggest issues I saw the last two days. You guys all of a sudden just, Lose your negatives. You got to keep those. That is a negative 8. Less than 24. Thought that I forgot the variable. <laughs> I did. I got it in there now, though. All right. Negative 8n is less than 24. Last step. The inverse of multiplying by negative 8 is good. Much better. Divide by negative 8. And we get a negative three. Uh-oh, what'd we do? We took action with a negative through multiplying or dividing, right? We divided by negative eight, so what happens? Y'all love it. You flip the inequality. So N is now greater than negative three. Pause me or do it in the next 10 seconds, graph. Oh yeah. 
is a good one. Careful, it's a little tricky, trip some of you up. You ready? Bam, open circle. And because we flipped the inequality, we're now greater than, so we go to the right. We go to where the larger numbers are. When we have negatives, the smaller the negative, the greater the value, right? Do you wanna have more debt or less debt? Less debt is better, so that's the greater number, okay? Two down, two more to go, here we go. What did we say when we started number two? You remember? It was the first thing I said. Okay, you probably don't remember, but if you do, good job. Simplify each side before you do anything, okay? Don't start moving things right away. Is this side simplified? That rhymed, whatever. No, it is not, because you have like terms. What can combine on that left side? You can say it. What was that? Okay, good, yes. The 4K and the 2K combine to give me 6K. Oh, easy money now. Now it's just like a problem that we started with. Go ahead and solve it. Go ahead and solve this one all the way through. You can pause me. I'm just going to keep going, but keep going on your own. Opposite of subtracting three is adding three. Opposite of multiplying by six is, that was my, you can see in the air. That was dividing by six. Don't judge. Did we take action with a negative by multiplying or dividing? No. We get two. Graph, whoa, 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 stop. Open or close, put it up. Mr. Bill, make sure they got their hands up. Opens are correct. So I have an open at two. What's the larger side? Well, that goes to three. What's less? One. X is less than two. Which number is less than two? If you don't know this, I don't know what to say. One is less than two, and you're done. Okay, three up, three down. Here we go, last problem. Okay, everybody put your pencils down. It'll actually write it down first. Five minus two P plus two P is greater than or equal to one. Once you've written it, put your pencils down because you need to see this one, okay? This one's sneaky. There's only a couple of these, but these are sneaky, all right? 5 minus 2p plus 2p is greater than or equal to 1. Some of you are realizing already what's going to happen. Like, wait a sec. How you got 2p and you take away 2p? Yeah, they cancel. Don't freak out, okay? Again, watch and then write the problem down. Watch. So you're correct. When we combine like terms, because we are simplifying each side before we move anything, these cancel out and you're left with 5 greater than or equal to one. You see that? Now this is where we need to talk about this. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. How do we solve if there's no variable? You stop. And here's what you have to do. Anytime your variables cancel out, you look at what's left and ask the ultimate math question. Is that true? Is that true? Anytime your variables cancel out, you look at what's left and ask yourself, is that true? So I'm gonna ask the question here. Is it true that five, the number five, is greater than or equal to one? Now, remember the verbiage, is it true that five is greater than or equal to one? What do you think? Yeah. Now, if you're holding up, well, it's not equal to. I didn't say it has to be equal to. I said greater than or equal to. Is it greater than or equal to one? Yes. When that happens, when that happens, you have something that's always true. Okay? Doesn't matter what number you put in there, it'll always be a true statement. So what you put is all 
real numbers. You remember when we categorized in the last test? Remember there's whole numbers, there's natural numbers, there's rational, irra there's real. It means any real number will work for this. Because the whole goal of these solving inequalities or equations is, let's find the number that makes these true. That's what all this is. Any number that is less than or equal to seven, any of these numbers will make this a true statement. I don't know if you've connected those dots yet. So when we get to a problem where any number works, we put in all real numbers as our solution. Now, 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 listen. Let's say we had a problem and at the end it said, uh, let's go with five less than or equal to one, okay? I, we're just hypotheticals here, okay? We're hypothesizing. You're welcome. I, again, when the variables cancel out, you look at what's left and ask yourself, is that a true statement? So if it would have canceled out and we were left with this statement, is it true that five is less than or equal to one? Is that statement ever true? No. So if you had the variables cancel out and you're left with a false statement, that'll never be true, so you put no solution. That's the symbol for no solution. Okay? Yes, mathematicians, we are the laziest people on earth, so we created all these symbols, okay? Variables cancel out. Ask yourself one question. What do you ask yourself? I hope you said it. Is it true? If it's true, all real numbers. If it's false, no solution. Have a great day. I tried, Molly.